house is a connection, a collaborative of many types of music that I enjoy coming up. I grew up in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, during an era where it all began. The disco scene was in there for a couple years, few years, and then, then, then the house scenes. The only difference was playing a piece of the song and playing the whole song. House is a collaborative of music lovers enjoying disco, enjoying R&B, um, enjoying punk rock music, um, Euro, Euro funk. It's a body thing, a soul thing, a spiritual thing. You were there just to party and enjoy the music. All your hangouts were left at the door. But what I appreciated most was the, you know, was the, the crowd, the energy, you know, that these people wasn't here to snatch gold chains or, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't that type of party. You didn't have to shine, you know, you came as you were, and everybody came out for the love of the music. There's a four beat, a four count beat, what they call the four to the floor. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, in the beginning was a lot of organs, um, keyboards. But it always comes back to that four to the floor. That, that, is, that is the formula. That is the, that's where it all starts. What we're gonna do right here is go back. Way back, back into time. The first thing came to mind was Jackie Brock. She emulated at that time, Studio 54, you know, was very prevalent up in New York. And they had like a policy where they would kind of handpick their crowd. Jackie, I don't know if she got the idea from there or, or she that was just what she felt, how she felt that the crowd should be. So she helped establish the crowd. And then I was able to further that by the music I played. In the last, 25 years, um, Louis Vega um, and started originally as Masters at Work. They have introduced or reintroduced us to artists and genres of music that maybe some of us would have ignored. Of course, Larry Levan was, you know, at the garage. Uh, I, I was able to experience them. Tony Humphreys at the Zanzibar. Um, Ted Patterson. And there are many others who, who have made contribution. I'm happy, I'm carefree, and I'm gay. I was born There's a whole freedom that comes with dancing. Um, and there's a, a saying, I don't think we can necessarily call it a proverb, but <laughs> It's like nobody's watching that, you know, that pretty much defines, um, you know, musically what, you know, the gay community uh, was getting from house music. Yeah, I guess it was more an underground scene, but um, we, I used to re refer to it as dance music back then. Well, I guess it wasn't natural to be openly gay. They gathered in these spaces, you know, with, you know, with like um, people and they just were able to dance and, and, and be free. They were able to be themselves the most in this, uh, in this genre of music, yeah. this party scene, you know. I'm not going to give credit. I'm not going to give <laughs> the gay community credit for the term underground, mm -hmm. because I think underground has always been traditionally a word that's used to describe that which is not accepted by the masses. In the early part, it was a very diverse crowd. Like, you know, at Odell's, you know, it was a gay and a straight, and they all came together to party for the music, you know. There was no hangouts or anything. But then when the hip hop, it, it started segregating the scene. You know, you had the people that liked the hip hop, you liked the, and, and then the, um, they didn't want to mingle with the gay crowd, the straight, so it really segregated it for a while. They obviously had the greatest impact, the gay community. Um, you know, some, some would go as far as to say, you know, like, you know, House is gay or was gay. I mean, there was that stereotype, if you will. Not to say it's necessarily true, but it, it was, they definitely embraced it first, as they did with Disco. So that, that made sense. I don't think it's dying. 
there it's it's spreading into other genres. It has not been totally embraced by the next generations because that's kind of what what has happened to the music um, is that it, it hasn't been embraced so it hasn't been passed down. Well, what I do find is that it's very hard for the younger generation to absorb it the way I see it. It's it's not lost, but it's just very hard for the um, younger generation to appreciate it. I think house, like jazz music, has um, some diehard lovers of the genre who just won't let it go. I think they need to get involved more and you know learn how to play the music to appreciate it. Our stronger supporter have become the house music crowd and the urban scene, the R&B, hip hop, and that night, which is regularly our Friday night, that used to be the bass night that supported the club when the hip, when the house scene had died down to like a few couple hundred people or so, because the, the club was initially established on the house music. I have a, a t-shirt that says house music lives. It is a slogan um, that we have here in uh, Baltimore. Uh, it is the motto of Collective Minds Festival, House Music Lives. So, no, house music is alive and it's well. It's very important to teach and, and distribute what you know to that younger generation. So the future of house is actually looking kind of bright. I do turn on the radio sometimes at noon and I do hear house music in the midday mix. I never thought I'd still be hanging out in the club, but you know what? That's my sanctuary. Been in a club for the last, let me see, 43 years, every New Year's Eve except one. I love the DJ and I'm going to keep, you know, playing new music and old music and making music until, until the wheels fall off. If you were coming into that room in the basement and music was going on, if you wanted to step behind those turntables, you don't let that music stop. Yeah.